right here we have this top down RTD Ag 100 and we're gonna go uh, over the features on these scanners so you can see what it's able to diagnose and what kind of cars and what features it has so first uh, when you power this up uh, you might notice that this runs on top of Android so it's a it's an Android operating system uh, you can charge it and then uh, Turn it on as well, but if you once you plug it into the OBD2 port underneath the dashboard, it will power up on its own as well. So we'll go to RDD 100 software. Up here on top, you have the menu, and you can select American cars. And currently, that's all that there is: Chrysler, Ford, GM, and EOBD will allow you to read the um, codes from the engine control unit on almost any American car. But it will not let you get into any other systems like transmission ABS etc. Here we go under European and you can see the coverage here it's much more extensive of Romeo, Audi, BMW, Citroen, Dacia, Euro, Ford, Fiat, Jaguar, Land Rover, Lancia, Mercedes, Mini, Opel, Peugeot, Porsche, Renault, Saab, Seat, Skoda, Smart, Sprinter, Valjo, Volvo and VW and Volkswagen. So in this car we're connected to a Mercedes Square, Asian cars, uh, Acura, Davo, Holden, Honda, Hyundai, Infiniti, Suzuki, Lexus, Mazda, Mitsubishi, Nissan, Subaru, Suzuki, and Toyota. So those are the cars. And you might notice that it's a demo version. What you can do is if you're new to using a scanner, you can just go to demo. You don't have to have it connected to a car at all. And go to demo. Uh, it's, this is the version of the software. Press OK. And then you can go play around and look at the various options in case uh, so that you can get familiar uh, before you connect to the car. Now this. Uh, even though it does connect to most of the control units on um, all these cars that we showed it's, uh, it, provo it provides only one way communication or two way so you can read codes, you can go as far as clearing the codes but that is it, you are not able to perform adaptations, you're not able to um, activate sensors, you can look at live sensor data um, but you, you, you cannot program anything basically with the scanner uh, we'll, we'll go here, it shows the vehicle and it shows the version of the software. Now you can update the software via Wi-Fi and um, I believe for the first one or two years you get free updates. And uh, the version that we have here, by the time you're looking at this video it might be outdated so you might have to update it. And this covers vehicles up to 2016. We'll press OK here. And then here you can uh, choose, you have to select the model of the car, you can do an automatic search. It might pick up the vehicle, but it might not. Uh, so if it does, I'll show the VIN number, but if it does not, it might ask you for the VIN like it did right there. Or you can go to manual select if you know the vehicle model. In this case, we're going to go this route too, so you can see the coverage. And you can see the different models right there. And plus AMG, 222, 117, ML, GL. SL, SML, SLK. So you just need to go and find your vehicle. In this case, we have a S class, it's a 221 chassis. So let's see if we can find that. CCLS, we're getting to S class. So right here, we have an S class 221 chassis. We select that. And then long chassis in this case, gasoline, left hand steering. And the model is a S5. S550 for my life. Now we have two things here, control unit and health report. Let's do a health report really quick and see what that is. So basically that will do a full system scan. Um, you need to have the ignition on. Uh, if you're going to be connected to the car for a long time, you might want to have the car running or connect to the secondary battery source because you will drain the car battery if you're connected for a long time with the ignition on. But we do have the ignition on. And right here you can see the progress and it's going through all the systems that are in this car and it's seeing if there's any fault course. So you can see a radar fuel pump. And this is pretty extensive. It's, it's, get, it's seeing um, basically all the systems that are on this Mercedes S-Class. And these cars do have a lot of control modules. You can see there the faults. I would say fault code. I would say not equipped if the car doesn't have that system. But up on top here, you can see the progress at 39. So you wanna just wait for a minute. Uh, allow it to go through the, all the systems, read codes. And then once that is done, we'll look at a report. And when you look at the report, there's two things you need to look for. Uh, of course, the description of the code and the code itself. We also need to look at the status. Uh, if it says the status is stored, that means that code was in the past. And you usually can't erase those codes. It might be good to just hit this um, 
camera button right there and it will say it will save a screenshot so you can go back to your um to your files here let me go back here and find files yeah so you can go to sd card and send launch screenshots and then you will have whatever screenshot you took you'll have that there so in case you clear code and i usually you want to clear code if it just say, says store status you can usually clear them uh, without any um, issue the problem is uh, or what you need to focus on is on codes that say current because those codes will trigger different warning lines and that means it's a current problem and right here i am you can see really quick uh, i will go over the various control modules in a minute but in this case i just want to show the health report and go fault report here and then right here uh, you can see the dtc diagnostic trouble codes it uh, has code description and then here is that state is stored so we're not worried and on the right here you, you, the control module that it belongs to so in this case is engine control module and all these codes are stored um adaptive brakes on the right here but you can see they're stored that's pretty common if you know if you had a dead battery or if it's a car that's not being scanned for like a, over a year there you will usually see more or more than one code and they're usually stored unless you have issues with the car right here though you can see this is um eis module current and stored so this is a uh, problem on this car because we get the battery light warning light and it says terminal 30b not present under voltage supplies so um in this case and then you have the code here we can research and that code might, should be somewhere else as well sometimes the same code might be um present in more than one module so and then we do have a couple series not activated anyway so we'll go back though okay so here we have control units and if you're a beginner you might or if you're just getting the car or you just got the car for the first time or if you're looking to buy a car you might want to go to health report and do the full scan and see everything but let's say if you're just focused on one particular problem you'd want to go to control units and then here you have some uh, options and under these options you will have the actual control unit so under drive you will have transmission control unit the unit intelligent uh, servo module ecm distronic rudder sensor fuel pump all right, so we're gonna go look at transmission control unit. Ignition is on, and then here, version information. You really don't need to look at that. But uh, if you go here to read fault codes, and that's what you'd be interested, you see no fault code in this case. But if you did have one, of course you'll need to go fix that, address that issue, and then you can come back here and you can clear that code. Uh, usually, transmission codes will stay there. I might keep the car in limp mode until you clear the code. Even if you fix the problem. The car might still be in limp mode until that car is clear. So you can see engine control module, like if you're um, all right, limited. Uh, it's engine uh, ECU. So it's, if you check engine light, check engine light is on. You'll have a code here, and this would normally be P zero five two two or P fourteen twenty five. You can see the code here, but they're stored, so you can go back and you can clear them from memory. Hit OK, and you're done. And you can see the other module. So we're going to look at the other sub menus really quick. Uh, well, here we are under chassis. We go under chassis, and then you can see adaptive brake. So if your ABS light is on or anything like that, you'll come here. Do the close from that, and here you can see right rear speed sensor. Basically, all the speed sensor values or codes will be in here, and these are all stored. So you can come in here and clear them uh, unless you have a current one even if you do try to clear it the code will come right back up so you can't really and one thing important here is this this last option is read data stream because what um, you can use this for for example if you have a bad um, ABS sensor it might trigger your ABS light ESP uh, or traction stability control <laughs> usually in one bad ABS sensor will trigger more than one warning lights but what you can do is you can go um, to this um, menu here and go RPM sensors. In this case, uh, left front speed sensor, left rear speed sensor. So you can check all of these and then look at the values. Uh, here we're 
um, you, you can look at these values here and if you start to move this car this will change a little bit um, and they, but if you have one that doesn't change uh, it stays the same or it just has no value at all you know that that sensor is bad but also you'll have a fault code that indicates or points towards that uh, bad ABS sensor now sometimes it could be a wiring of course or the ABS pump itself or the module but typically in most cases uh, the ABS sensor is the, the issue all right so next we're going to look at an electron electric parking brake um, you can look at the codes for that and you come in here we have no faults I will not go through the each one of these individually because as you can see the menu is the same once you enter it and basically read codes clear codes and look at some live data from that particular model DPMS uh, suspension uh, one thing to point out in here is that again you can read codes if you um, have issues with suspension and it'll tell you there's a code for like the air compressor or one of the struts being too low or something like that and you can come uh, fix the problem and come back in and clear it and you can also look at some level sensor data so like one of the level sensors is bad like in this case we can look at the left front level sensor right front level sensor select it and then you can see the values here in volts so um that, that helps you troubleshoot a uh, problem but um what you don't have in here is actually tests so if you wanted to activate the uh, compressor and see if it generates the required um air pressure within the required amount of time um you, ca you can't run a test like that you can't raise lower the vehicle from here or do anything like that because remember it's one more like a one-way communication uh, it's just re reading data from the car and just clearing codes and that's it so we can't send commands program units and run tests so but it's still it's very powerful uh, considering the fact that it's able to get in almost all the systems on the vehicle so electronic power steering We'll go back, we'll go to body and SRS. If your airbag light is on, that's where you want to go. Wait, uh, sensing system. This can also trigger the airbag light. You can go into it, both those uh, modules. Central gateway, uh, that's the main <laughs> module that connects to all the other modules. So, this is a very critical module. You want to go and read codes from that. If you don't get a response from that module, that uh, it might be defective and especially like if, if you have a lot of issues on a mercedes a lot of systems don't work that usually is the problem uh, and here electronic um, ignition system um, central gateway keyless go um, overhead control panel i'm just gonna point out some of the uh, critical ones uh, let's go to information communication really quick instrument cluster Assist active uh, service system, assist plus, steering call module, backup camera, parktronic, auto view navigation, you know, command unit right there, seats and doors. So here you have all the door modules and the seats and all that. And the last one is air conditioning. You can go to air conditioning system, your AC operating unit, stationary heater, but AC is a critical one is if your AC system is not working you might have a code here sometimes uh, a, one of the sensors for the ac system might have might be out of range it could be due to like really high temperature or just the sensor itself going bad you might have a code here it says stored you can go back clear the code and your ac might start working again but uh, just keep in mind that that um that code will probably return and your ac might stop working again so you might you do want to address that problem whatever that code is um, get that fixed. Even if you can clear the code and get the system back on, eventually that will happen over and over again. So make sure that you address that problem. But that's it. It's a very powerful scanner. Um, and concerning the fact that it gets into all the control modules and uh, can read and clear codes from those. And also um, considering that it has such a broad um, vehicle coverage, uh, this is a great scanner. Um, I mean, it's excellent for uh, car owners, but also for a shop or a mechanic you just want something inexpensive to just have handy and read codes uh, this this will be a good unit to have uh, thank you for watching